Hey smokers, drug one here. Um, last week we tried some messing around with the ultimate DOS machine and tried to build it back into an old motherboard. Well, what if we tried to build it into something that was just as old, but different? Well, remember the old Arkenstone Deck Talk PC? This is where I originally got the Deck Talk PC card. What if it turned out we were to return its card to its former home? Well, this computer may have all the necessary, well, requirements for our ultimate DOS machine build, which is namely a lot of ISA cards. Now, if you guys remember this from the last video I did, like, probably four years ago, you notice that it has a cool little door here that you can look in to do some basic stuff. Can't really see it from here, but... What you can do is you can lie it flat, and it folds open with some really nice cable management. So yeah, here's what we got. We have 16-bit ISA, 16-bit ISA, 16-bit ISA, 16-bit ISA, 16-bit ISA, 16... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 16 bit ISA slots, which you'd, you'd probably see from a better angle, but there's a lot of them. In fact, there's so many 16-bit ISA slots, there's not really much room for anything else. There's no integrated video. Uh, this has a 16-bit ISA video card. What is it? What even is it? I have no idea. But it would theoretically be able to fit all my cards, and look at this long space here for the long cards. Deck Talk PC would go right at the end there, and then I would have the video, video spigot, the AW64, the downside to this is it doesn't have a place for a CD-ROM, which really hurts the Ultimate DOS machine. You can't play games like Rayman on it. I'd have to have some sort of external CD-ROM, and I'd have to definitely run a slave. I don't know if this thing can run a CD-ROM at all. So, yeah. But other than that, it's pretty good. It has all the room for all our stuff. But will this super old, like, IDE interface, is that going to be able to boot up our stuff? This is some ancient stuff in here, and there's a lot of weird cables running around. I have no idea what some of them are. Um, most of them are for the front speaker controls. And there's not a lot of wiggle room for me to move stuff around, like this is the where the hard disk goes, and this kind of caddy thing. That is really loose. I don't know what happened there. But, uh, whoa, actually the whole front's coming off. I think that may have been glued in place. I'm not entirely certain. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The thing is, we need the motherboard. And that's what we're going to use to get the job done. Um, so, I guess I can try to put in the cards to see if it works. But I'm not even going to try any of that. All I'm going to do is plug in the hard disk here, see if it'll start up off of it. If it does, then we're good. If it doesn't, then we're done. So, and then if it doesn't do that, we can, I can at least see if it'll boot it MS-DOS, and then just our old method to see if we can actually get it started up off of this. Whew, if this works, whew. So here's the uh, drive we were using before. This is actually bootable on that Pentium 3 motherboard. So this is a clone of our fake 128-gig SD card that has the Ultimate DOS machine working. So this is identical to that. So I guess that should work. You know, judging by the cable here, it might actually be this way. Oh, God. It's pretty much not going to work the first time. Okay, let's unwind that. Of course, we don't. This power supply has two, just two, um, Molex power. That's it. Actually, it really only has one. The other one is just floppy power. So and that's it. There's got to be more than one. It's probably tucked away somewhere. Oh, actually, I think it's it's connected to the front speaker. Oh Lord! All right, so that's plugged in can make it neater later, but let's actually see if this will output any video or even power on at all. 
Now I'm not quite sure how this is, but the inside of this has pretty much no dust in it at all, anywhere. It's got like that 2015 tech in it or something. Okay, it's all plugged in. I need a keyboard. Okay, switch it on. Hopefully it doesn't fry. Hmm, well, did more than I thought it was gonna do. Uh, save and exit. It's very colorful. Uh, BIOS program. Drive not ready error. Insert, insert boot disk it in A. Well, let's start with that. I think this has our DOS on it. It's a really cool vertical orientation floppy drive. Floppy drive is actually upside down right now, so hopefully it doesn't take offense to that. Extended memory, 3 megabytes? Ugh, I don't even think you can start Windows 3 with that. So I might need to fix that. It is a 486. So that's cool. Oh great, it's not doing anything. Alright, let's try it again. Maybe it's not working because it's an upside down floppy drive and it's falling out. We'll close this! Oh, maybe you won't go there. Okay, never mind. We're going somewhere else. Okay. Oh, oh this is not good. No, no, no. Floppy disk drive controller failure. Was that on there before? Why does it suck now? Um, I must have broken something while I lifted it up. Is it getting pinched? I can't even tell. There's too many ribbons everywhere. Oh, man. Now, one of the things that it says on the screen here is it says floppy disk is 1.2 megabytes. 1.2 megabytes? Why did I think this was a 720K? I don't know. I guess I just part of me didn't really trust this generic information to be accurate. Um, but what if it is? That's a problem. So maybe this is something we can resolve by in the CMOS. Whoa, hello. Hey, we can change the floppy disk type. Maybe that's the problem. Hmm. Well, if it's a 1.44, three and a half inch, then I can just use my regular drive. Would that have been that simple? Well, that's why I didn't trust that information too much, but uh, okay. Hopefully I can keep it powered on long enough. All right, so now it says 1.44, three and a half. Well, would you look at that? It's working now. Holy piss buckets. Why the hell is the default 1.2 megabyte flop? <laughs> so the reason this all this weird stuff is happening is because it's looking for stuff on C, which we don't have connected uh, until soon. Um, I'll just plug it into this and we'll see if it can, or plug it into the card that I put in there and we'll see if it works. Okay, so I plugged it in and since I know the floppy's bootable now, we'll power back up probably are going to need some slight modifications done. Unless it doesn't work at all now. Oh, shit. I had the IDE cable plugged in upside down and the drive spun up and hey, here we are. We're still on 1.44 megabyte drive. Starting MS-DOS, will it read the hard disk and load things off of it? No, it won't. F disk. No fixed disks present. What? You know, last thing that leaves for us to switch back to this thing. And oh my God, hope that this works. Yeah, plug that in right the first time. Floppy's working. And I think I got the hard disk right, because... no, oh, still didn't see that. No fixed disks present. The drive just cannot be detected. No matter what. Why didn't the floppy disk get detected last time? Maybe it was because it wasn't identified in the setup. Hard disk type, I suppose, if I manually select how many cylinders and whatnot it has. Maybe it'll work. 14, 6, 10 cylinders. And then heads, 16. WPCOM, I have no idea. And the L zone sectors. Uh, it doesn't say the sectors on here. There's no way I can, I'm going to get this right. All right. Well, this looks close. I've never tried this before. Hard disk C type 47. Um, it may have tried to boot off of the hard disk, which. It can't do, and that's not surprising. Now you need to set the uh, boot priority. Media analysis? Uh, no? Why do you... 
Why do you need to wipe the drives to do a media analysis? Look at this. It's tucked away. Uh, modified page up. There we go. There's just, there's just no way this is going to work. Yep, we did find it again. Uh, well, that's new. I don't really care. All right. Well, let's see if FDIS will actually see something now. Hey, progress. But I think it's just because the BIOS is telling FDISC that there's a drive there, but we really don't have any idea. So, um, display partition information. Oh my god, that is the disk. That is correct. I don't know how it found it, but it found it. Okay, so that would mean that we can play Duke Nukers, right? Hey, nope, it's there, but it's not there. All right. Okay, well, I have another disk here. It's not bootable, but it's it's the other drive that I put some files on. Might be able to get something to run, or at least read. Um, this one actually does say how many sectors it has, so I'll be able to manually assign. Um, it's um, 63, by the way. 406.10 cylinders. So if this is what we need to use, whatever, sure, I can make that happen. Just I'm one drive clone away from making that work. No, it's not Windows XP. Let's go to standard. Let's go to 47. So now we have 14, 1, 12, 15. I don't know what those other are, but sectors. We got 63 of those. And that makes 6,500 megabytes. So we may not need any of that other information, like the WPCOM and stuff. So everything should still save. Let's see if we can see what's on there. We can read files off of the disk. So if you do manual disk sectors, it finds everything. So if that's the case, then that means we can play Rayman. I don't know why that's going to work. There's no CD. Oh my god, it's working. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a first for me. Never have manually configured a hard disk before. Whoa, that is slow as balls. Man, this thing is not quick. Oh no. I hope this thing can play Doom or we're gonna have some problems. If we take another look at this, it says 63 SPT. Is that sectors? It sure is pretty similar to the other number, which was 63. They Both of these drives have 63 sectors, so that might have been our secret number. So 14, 6, 10, 16 heads. So we might be able to get this working and just booting normally if we manually assign all of that correctly and not the incorrect information. So let's try that. There we go. So, user installed. Cylinders, 16, 6, 10. Heads, 16. Sectors, 63. Now, that says it's 7.1 gigs, which does not look right. There's no P in the word sector. Now, 66 looks right, but let's just try 63 anyway, just because that's what it says on the thing. Yes, it can read it. Oh my god. It's reading off the drive right now. This information is not on the floppy drive. So it can't find the auth64, which I don't really care. We'll put that in later. Okay. See? There's all our shit. Does that mean we can play Duke? Duke. Duke 3D. Not enough memory. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. We only have three megs. Can we run Windows? We can run Windows on three megabytes of RAM. Four. Can we start the wind cap? That is the real question. Oh my god. Oh no, the video adapter. Fuck. I don't have a video card that's capable of this. Well, holy shit, we were close. Let's see if it'll let us bypass this. Oh, no. So, yeah, that would probably be found in the WinINI or something. I do have another option for a ISA video card. A Trident card from 1992, which is exactly the same year as this. Uh, motherboard BIOS. So, gonna go ahead and install that. 
and we got VJ plugged in in the back. So now let's go ahead and turn it on and reset all of our sector information on here because I unplugged the power and there's no CMOS battery. Good news, the video card worked, so that's good. Okay, going back into this. So other than 47, which is user defined, there are other types here, I guess, with different size hard disks that go all the way down to megabytes, which is not very helpful. So 47 is really our best choice because it doesn't give us anything that's reasonably big. So right now it is set by default to boot up off of the hard disk. And this is also incorrect. We'll fix that. Now I'm going to see if it'll just boot off of the hard disk all by itself. Ooh, that's cool. Now we're not quite ready to boot off the hard disk yet. Let's try the floppy. There we go. So yeah, 256k of VRAM. The floppy drive has been unplugged for some reason. Okay, okay floppy drive's back in. Making some horrible noises. There we go. It's more normal sound. And we're booting. And it can read off the hard disk, which is good. You just can't boot off of it. I mean, I'm not, not expecting to boot off of a hard disk at this point with this sort of weird of a setup. Okay, so it can't find the AW64. We don't have it plugged in yet. So the only thing left I'm trying to do is seeing if we can even get into Windows and it'll whether or not it will actually let it um, with this new video card, quote-unquote new, actually start Windows with the weird kind of 1024x768 setup I have set up. Damn it! So... I think we'll still stick with that Trident card. Something tells me it's going to be a little bit better than this guy. Maybe this thing actually is better, but I have no idea. So, eh. Well, now that it's given us a DOS prompt back, let's see if we can find out win INI. So this is the master control INI file before the Windows registry was invented. This INI file becomes the dumping ground for random stuff you have installed. Random Netscape. A list of your fonts, individual RGB colors for all of the window elements, but not a damn thing about resolution? Oh, here we go. SVGA256. Look at that resolution. That could be our problem. So, what we can do is change this to that. Now, this driver file may need to be replaced with something else, but I don't know what the default is. I'm going to go check in my um, Windows 3.1 folder that I made on my Windows 10 machine using DOSBox to see what the default is. So this entire segment, draw dib, is not even in a blank factory fresh WinINI. So I could get rid of the whole thing to fix it. Or we can see if 640x480 fixes it. Let's find out. Nope. I could have backed it up, but it doesn't work, so let's just try it again. Seriously? God damn it. File type associations. I went through the entire WinI and I. There's nothing else in here about display drivers. So we have a lot of INI files in the Windows directory. That's something called system INI. Let's try this. Display driver svj256.drv. That's probably our problem. Let me go check what a fresh system INI looks like. I have an answer. It's just that. Now, this can be changed later from the UI to get it back to where it was, so it's not a big deal. Usually that extra line you saw on the WinINI is added from when it loads it off of the system disk because it needs to actually be installed. It's extra components for drivers that doesn't come with a normal install. This is different. I notice it's not showing a mouse because I don't have one. This is the screen it was sitting at before. 
and it took quite a long time on a Pentium 1, which means it's going to be even slower on a 486. So we could actually sit at the screen for a good, I don't know, minute? The backlight is on on the screen. We do have the green light. It's not going off. It is just showing us a black screen. So we're going to wait, see what it does. Okay, so we're getting in. We did get in. Um, we got an error with uh, our AW because we don't have it installed. Wave synth requires a Pentium processor better to run. Uh oh. Wow, I've never seen Windows 3.1 take some time to load. <laughs> what? Okay, so here we are, and this is our number one thing. We don't have a Pentium, and we're about to play back video. Oh, crap. So we have the same problem we had before with the working directory being crap. Not a big deal. I can work around that, whether it's through slave drives or other means. But we may be kind of screwed, but we made it. We're back. We're in Windows we just have a lot of limitations now, so let's go ahead and install the rest of the hardware in the way it was before and see where we're at. Okay, so I got a lot of stuff to install, so just sit back and watch. I'll probably speed it up. Okay, so we have our desktop card back in its old position. I still have yet to put this bent kind of header thing over there. Got the video spigot, and we got the O64, and we've got a Trident video card and our IDE interface. Um, slaving this drive to this, and I'm going to manually put the sectors and heads on this. Let's see if this boots. 14, 112, 15, and 63. There we are. That should be both of them. Everything's properly configured. It still works as a master drive. You can still see all of this. Ooh, that's new. Oh, shit. Oh, well, there it is. Ooh, we have a five option. That means multiple drives have been detected. Hey, yeah. All right. All right, let's go. Okay, I've got a speaker plugged in. It's working. Main file manager. It does detect a whole bunch of drives. Oh my god. Switch over to D. It's detected second as my slave drive. Oh my god, we're almost there. There it is, VidCap. Oh my god. It is lagging. Let's move it over here. Oh my god, it's not going to show me whether or not it's working yet. What? What is this? What? What? Are, I've never seen this before. Oh my god, that is functional. That is working. Time to get the Kirby. I'm going to plug this in. Oh my god, that looks like garbage! <laughs> but it's working! Oh my god, it's so slow, but it's working! I don't believe it! Image format. Okay, so my camera stopped recording. So, I think this is Shiverstar. This is, uh... Rockstar? Aguastar? Is that Rockstar? That's Popstar. Um, starting a level, okay. Again, this is 80 by 60. Uh, I'm definitely... Whoop! I got something. Oh, shit. I ran into something else. 
It's a little bit of a lag here. Oh, I got an ability. That's a projectile weapon of some sort. Okay. This really puts the pattern matching abilities of the human mind to the test here. Uh, just memory of what these things are. I am making it through. That's a bridge there. It's just barely just walking through this. Jump up. Yeah, so is this practical? I don't think so. <laughs> is this uh, usable? No. But it works. It's actually working on the 4E6. Just looks like garbage. And runs like crap. Again, 80 by 60. Let's, let me take a look at that again. What is this? 80 by 60. So we got audio working. We've got video capture working. But does the deck talk card work? Hello, I'm deck talk, the state of the art of text to speech synthesis. Thank God. Oh my God. Okay. So we're at pretty much feature parity with the old Ultimate DOS machine. We have deck talk card back here. We've got the video spigot and we've got the all 64. All of them work and does work but it's absolute minimum bare bones. It will just work, but that's it. It crosses just the barrier, the line of basic functionality. And oh my god. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, uh, this was a pretty good experiment, and I can't believe we made it this far. But uh, so yeah, thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you next week.